This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutzke is here to answer your questions and help you plan for a later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutzke. As promised, we are now joined by Todd Lutzke for Ask Todd. This is the segment where you get to ask your estate planning questions live on air. We got the phone lines open at 888-205-2263. Again, that is 888-205-2263. Usually have a chance to get through two or three calls, so make sure that you get in line early if you do want to have your question answered by Todd. That phone number again is 888-205-2263. And we got the lines open right now, so you can get in line to ask Todd your question. One more time, that is 888-205-2263. Mr. Lutsky, how are you doing today? I'm never better. How how you doing? Pretty good. I uh, went out to dinner last night. Yeah? I met the best valet ever when I dropped off the car. Best valet. His name was Parker. It's <laughs> great. Fantastic. He is, good. he is the best. That is the best. Todd, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, beneficiaries on accounts, specifically on retirement accounts. What's the, the general thinking these days in terms of how to name IRA beneficiaries in order to coordinate them with an estate plan? So this this is I'm glad we have a month to talk about this, folks, because this is very, very new in the estate planning world. Uh, it's only been around since the secure act came out, you know, say call it 2022 ish. So that is new in the estate planning world. And there's a lot of rules that go with it. So it's going to take time to explain all this. All right. This is not a one minute answer, but generally speaking, when you're dealing with an IRA, right, you, you, probably have to understand two parts with an estate plan. One, I've got income tax problems with an IRA because none of it's been taxed. Mm -hmm. There's a whole other problem that many people forget about, the estate tax side. When you die, it's also subject to estate tax. So it's included in the estate for estate tax, and as it comes out, it's subject to income tax. So how it comes out and how quickly it comes out is very important from an income tax perspective. And if that's not complicated enough, if that's not enough with two balls in the air that we have to think about, add in those folks who say, I also want to protect this from the nursing home. Knowing full well that during life, I cannot change the owner of the IRA to the trust because of that Second ball in the air, income tax problems. If I took it all out and moved it to the trust to protect it from the nursing home, now I got to pay income tax on it. So that's a problem. So I just, I didn't even really answer your question. I just started laid the groundwork for what we have to start thinking about when we name the beneficiary of an IRA, your estate, like when can you do it? Who can do it? How old should you be? Mm. Lots of stuff to think about, but the the, the quick answer is, now that I've gone this far, is that you can do it. It can work to shelter assets from estate taxes. It can be done where it doesn't create any adverse income taxes. No better, no worse, but not adverse. And at the same time, serve to protect an asset from the nursing home in a way that we could not do it before. Talking with Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan. If you've got a question that you want to ask Todd right now live on air, studio line here is 888-205-2263. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it is going to be right to your questions with Todd. That number is 888-205-2263. Again, quick break here, then right to your questions. One more time, that number is 888-205-2263. Two zero five two two six three. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at ten thirty, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. 
You're listening to Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Still a little bit of room on the phone, so if you have a question for Todd Lutsky, call 888-205-2263. Again, that is 888-205-2263. Let's go to Phil on the Cape. Phil, what is your question for Todd? Yes, uh, Todd, uh, you did a um, trust for me uh, more than five years back, and now um, in the trust I had a rental property. I want to sell the property. Can I take some money out of that sale? So what are you going to sell the property for? Oh. About how um, much? Oh, say around 600000 600000 Okay, so first... Uh, I, just to explain to everybody so we understand the whole transaction. One, the first question is, can I sell it? Because it's in an irrevocable trust. It's irrevocable, right? That is correct. All right. So can I sell it? The answer is yes. The trustee can sell it. Next, you're going to have capital gains taxes that you have to pay, right? So you you know whatever you paid for it, plus capital improvements, less depreciation, if you've been renting it, is your basis. And so the difference between the fair market value and the basis will be your capital gain, which folks, by the way, is the same as it would be if it wasn't in the trust. So we don't have any adverse taxes. So you'll have to file that return, pay the taxes, but the money will flow into the trust and the house will flow out of the trust to the buyer. And now you'll file a 1041 income tax return to pay that tax. Now we're, well, we're getting there. I, I promise to your question. So now Everybody can understand what's happened internally in the trust because of this sale. Now there's money sitting in the trust. I don't know. After taxes, let's say there's $500,000 in there. I'm just guessing. Uh, what can we do with it? First of all, I, I want to ask you, do you, know, do you really need $500,000 before I tell you whether you can take it out or not? Is it something you really need to put $500,000 in your pocket? I, I do not, but I... You know, I spent a lot on the house myself, okay. out of pocket expense. So mm -hmm. um, I don't need five hundred, but I could use half of that. Okay, and again, I'm going to ask you again: Why do I need a quarter million dollars in my pocket right now? Because the where it sits, and, and here's why I'm asking: It's important for everybody. That money is just as protected from the nursing home. Remember, you've been in there more than five years, folks. So. That money is just as protected from the nursing home avoiding probate, sheltered from estate taxes, providing for your family when you pass, as it was when it was a house. We didn't reset a clock. We didn't do any of that. So my advice would be, you know, can we get it out? Yes. I'm going to just tell you that. I'm sure we can get you the money. Secondly, maybe I just take it when I need it. I know it's mine. Do I need it in my pocket right now? Or do I need just some right now to take care of something that I want to do? So let me ask you that. Where, where are you at with that? Yeah, just something uh, like uh, take a trip or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. So try. that's what I want you to remember. I want you to remember that it's your money. It's just sitting there. If you don't need it all today, then don't take it. If you do need it for a car, a trip, or something like that, then I can explain to you the two-step approach to get it out by, you know, gifting it out to the to the kids and we can certainly talk off air I can it, it comes out off to the kids and then and they give it back so at the end of the day that's a way to do it even though you can get it my advice would be spend money outside the trust first simply because that money outside the trust is completely at risk for the cost of long-term care and so why wouldn't I spend that first especially if, if it's from an IRA because saving it for the kids isn't always the best way to go because then it comes out over 10 years to the kids if it's an IRA, which isn't helpful from an income tax perspective. So that's my thought on that. And, and I hope that answered your question and, and a whole lot more and give you something to think about as well. But we can certainly discuss it off air. Give me a call. Folks, this was a great question because it explains the, the way the trust works and how flexible it is. And it also even got us to the IRA question, which is what our guide is about, right? There might be money outside the trust that everybody has because we can't put an IRA in a trust. 
how do we deal with our IRAs as part of our estate plan, right? Naming the estate, although seemingly isn't the way you would initially think now because the SECURE Act passed, it gives us an opportunity to name the estate as an IRA without causing adverse estate tax consequences or income tax consequences and can ultimately protect it from the nursing home faster than we could other ways before or otherwise before. So folks, learn how to do this. If you have an IRA, get the guide 866-848-5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. Again, 866-848-5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. Todd, I've got another one here for you. Let's go to Jim in Maine. Jim, what is your question for Todd Lutsky? Hey, Todd, I got a question uh, on a step up in basis mm-hmm. on a on a on a primary resident mm-hmm. owned by a husband and wife. The wife passed away years ago in nineteen ninety something. Oh, can you give me the year? Because uh, that year is going to be really important. Was it nineteen ninety seven? Or was it was it before 1997 or after 1997? It's going to make a huge difference in my answer. Yeah, let's say before. Before 1997. Yeah. Okay, because that's going to make yeah. a huge difference. I'm in my car. Okay. Go ahead. So well, that so her interest her interest in the house landed in a family trust. The language of that trust provides husband with a life estate. That her interest in that um, property in that trust was reported on her estate return and no Q-tip election taken. Okay. Husband dies. Husband dies in 2021. Mm-hmm. And we're thinking that, and he was a trustee of her trust, by the way, that family trust. Yep. We're thinking with that life estate, he gets a step up in basis. Okay. Um uh, in, on his death in, in uh, 2021. Okay, so I, I think we're gonna we're gonna have to say no on that, and and let me explain. So, one he he had a one half interest in the property, right? Because he owned half, she owned half yep. when he died when she died. Her half, as I understand it, got included in her estate, stuck in a trust. In the trust, it says he has the right to live there. Okay. Yeah. And and there was a step up in basis, by the way, when she died on her piece that went into her trust. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that. So there should have been a step up in but that's nineteen ninety six, so you know, it's, the the number's low. So you you gotta step up for that half then. Okay. That life estate is not the kind of life estate that causes a step up in basis when husband dies. Okay, so when husband dies, the only way you get a step up in basis is if you die owning something. In this case, husband did. Husband owned half. So you're going to get a half step up in basis in 2021 when husband dies on his piece. There was a half step up in basis when wife died back in 1996, let's say. I get it, right? But no step up in basis on that life estate for husband. Why? Because in order to get a step up in basis when you have a life estate, the way the rule works is you have to give something away and retain the right to live there. In this case, husband didn't give anything away, right? Wife died owning a half interest in the property and wife granted husband a life estate. Wife did So so because husband didn't give away the property, and retain the enjoyment of what he gave away. And that's what 2036 of the code says. You have to give it away and retain an interest in order to get a step up in basis. In this case, that didn't happen, okay? So, and let me further explain how life estates work for folks that have done that because they're looking at it and they're saying, well, well, wait a minute, I, I have a life state and I gave it to my kids and I retain the right to live there. When you do that, when you talk about what's included, the full value of the properties included in the estate of the decedent, not just the life interest, which is amazing, right? But that's how it works. So if, I ha- if you're all listening and you've given away your property and you've retained the right to live there 
when you die, not just the life estate is included, but the full value is included. And to your point, Jim, if that were the case, then you'd get a full step up in basis on those situations when one dies. So, but in your case, I, I hope I explained that clearly. You're not going to get another step up on the life estate piece in the wife's trust. Mr. Lutsky, thank you so much for joining us today. Always a pleasure. Thank you. This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky has been presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800 393 4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated.